Well, I couldn't stand the way these looked, so I took them out of the car. <laughs> I'm going to repaint these because um, they're pretty horrible looking. And I think it'll really dress up the dash, even if they are just, you know, painted amateur like. Um, these should be chrome, but uh, we're going to do the same treatment we did to the instrument cluster on these. Um, these are fun to get out. They have uh, like a a speed nut that threads onto the back uh, of these all these panels except the glove box door and uh, it's a little bit of a technique to get those nuts off because they're threaded but they're not really threaded so it's kind of weird um, I was missing a nut and as I'm making this video it's interesting it looks like there was never one on that one so huh, that explains why there wasn't one anyhow so, I'm going to do that, uh, give these a wash, and then uh, begin the careful masking once again, and spray the silver on there. Hopefully the black will just be fine once it's clean. But the glove box door piece has issues. And I don't know when this happened, but this one has pieces on the back that are actually uh, held on by Phillips screws that go through the glove box door and you can see these are broken off I have most of the pieces so I'm gonna try um, gluing these back on which of course would not hold them by itself but we're gonna glue these in where they belong and then we're gonna reinforce it all with some good old JB weld that stuff uh, has worked wonders on trim pieces before for me so I'm going to try that and see if we can do it. I mean, worst case, I can always put some double-sided trim tape on these and, you know, just adhere them to the glove box door that way. But I'm going to try to fix it the right way. See if we can get these to just be held on by the four screws again. So that's going to be the project as we go forward this week, among other things. And I'll uh, come back and show you how I'm making out. All right, I've glued these uh, broken receptacles for the screws back on, but you can see that they're still not in very good shape. The cracks are still there, and some pieces are missing off of this one. So we're going to use the old JB weld on this, and I'm going to reinforce the bases and just give a little coating around the edges here to try to keep these things together. I think that'll that'll work. I'm in the process of painting these and I did the chrome silver paint on them and they came out mostly okay. There is some parts here you can see where the black started to pull off that I'll have to go back and correct but the glove box door that one got really bad when I pulled the tape off. Um, for whatever reason, the paint is not sticking very well to this. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I could mask it off and spray it flat black, but then I'm worried that it won't match the other pieces. But uh, I'm going to have to do something about that. These other ones I could just touch up these little spots and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. So, not sure how that's going to come out, but uh, we'll look at our options and see what we can do. So as we talked about in the past, this is the one piece that I have to actually get to replace. Um, this is a seat brace under the floor pan. This is on the passenger side. And that's a hole there, and I'm going to have to patch the floor. But I need this piece because it's, uh, it's a little too difficult to fabricate. So luckily, our people, our friends, at Auto Metal Direct, have started making these and you'll see that that is exactly the same as what we need and that is in the uh, AMD catalog online but it is going to be marked for a fair lane so a 66 on fair lane this is the same part Falcon has the same floor pan and so you can get that from AMD um, I think it runs around 68 bucks if I remember right. Okay, let's have a discussion about the cowl. 
This is going to be a problem on all Mustangs, Fairlanes, Falcons, pretty much any unibody Ford in the 1960s. And it's just a bad design. Um, there's no two ways about it. These cars were not designed to last more than 10 years, really. That was their expected service life. And so they were built accordingly. Um, this is with the cowl vent piece removed. It's just a bunch of screws across the front. And you want to make sure that if you have one of these rubber bumpers, that it uh, they have a screw in the center with Phelps head on it. So it's going to be filled with gunk and crap, so you're going to want to blow that out before you try to remove it but um, don't forget that one and then you have to remove the wipers and the wipers on these are not uh, maybe intuitive to somebody who hasn't worked on old cars but you'll see there's a tab here on the end that that has to be pushed away from the pivot and then this can be pulled off and it's a little tough to get these off a lot of times because they want to become seized on there um, what I do is I put a paint stick, paint stir stick down on the car and then I pry up on the outer edge at the, uh, on the right hand side here in your picture and pry up there while pulling on the other side and uh, I got another screwdriver wedged in there to hold that clip open and then it'll come off usually. Um, but these can corrode together because I think this is, uh, I think the end is, might be pot metal. Anyway, so you can see it has little splines in there, so you want to make sure you don't booger those up and then get it off the, uh, the pivot there. So, once we have that accomplished, then we have access to the cowl. And you can see down in here we've got a nice accumulation of foliage and other garbage that uh, I'm in the process of vacuuming out. So I got the other side done already, and the passenger side on this car is the good side. That's the side that's not rotted out. But the driver's side's rusted out around that interior vent, and that is right here. And so this whole piece, where the wiper motor mounts and all that, is all one stamping, and it's welded into the car. So if you've got a rotted out cowl, like I have, you're kind of screwed. The only way to fix this is to either cut access in this panel and get in there and do whatever you got to do or remove this whole thing and usually in the process you'll probably wind up destroying it and get a replacement which uh, Auto Metal Direct does now make these uh, cow panels and the firewall panel for the Fairlane which, if you know, is the same as the Falcon, or the Falcon's the same as the Fairlane, whichever came first, the chicken or the egg, we don't know. So we just assume it's, it was a Fairlane, and, you know, they built the Falcon on that platform, I think. Um, AMD doesn't know that it fits a Falcon, despite my having told them, and it's probably still, as you're watching this, listed as a Fairlane part. I've seen a lot of these um, also rust out, down here along the seam. I've seen a couple of fair lanes that I've looked at that are it just totally, you know, obliterated, got holes through here because that's a pocket. You know, the water and the gack will sit down in here and it'll just, you know, rust it from the inside out. And the reason they rust is because it's got no paint or any kind of protection on it in there because when it's put together at the factory, we just, you know, slap these two pieces together, put some seam seal in here, welded it together and called it good. And it's good for 10 years, which is all that they cared about back then. So, yeah, that's not spectacular. Also, if you're replacing this or trying to gain access to the vents, you're going to have to pull the fenders off, or if you're in Australia, the wings. So I'm going to continue cleaning this out and uh, try to get it as decent as I can. So the other thing that we're going to have to do then is block this off from any water getting in there. Um, and I'm going to use uh, magnetic material. I have not purchased it yet, but you can get it on Amazon. I've used this in the past. This is for magnetic stickers and race numbers and stuff I've used on autocross cars. And so you can buy this stuff in rolls or sheets and just uh, cut it to fit. And so we'll, what we'll do is we'll cut uh, a roll and make it so that it goes on the outside of this panel anytime we expect rain or we're going to wash the car 
and then we can just pull it off when we're driving and we want some airflow into the cabin. Um, could we block it off under here? Um, yeah, you might be able to do it that way and then just screw the cowl back on. The problem is you got to make sure you get it sealed completely. Um, we've got some other, you know, holes here to deal with. So I, I yeah, you could probably do it that way too. I'm going to use the external version for now and try that and hopefully that'll be adequate. Um, if I have to come back and put something underneath, well, so be it. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's only like eight screws and two wiper blades to get off, so there's that. And then, of course, this gasket that runs along here is completely rock hard and falling apart, so I'm going to have to order a new one of those. Also, when you're doing this, and I encourage everybody to do this, uh, take this off and get in there and vacuum all that gack out, is uh, make sure you get underneath this windshield molding, too, because there's some spots there where there's an accumulation of crud and again that's just going to hold the moisture um, also if you're going to replace this cow panel you're going to have to have the windshield out so that's the down and dirty on the cows um, they're bad news uh, it's just one of those things that suck about Fords and we all have to deal with it all right a little thing here about the antenna to remove that antenna you have to first remove this trim plate which just snaps down on top of the base, it has two little tabs here on either end. So if you get one side popped up, you should be able to get it off, no problem. It's got little indentations in there that you're supposed to be able to pry up on it. But I find that trying to go underneath this, right where those indents are, is a little bit more effective. And then once you get it off, you'll find there's four Phillips head screws here. They're not very long. And once those are out, then the antenna can be pulled out and uh, the cable is going to of course go inside the car and attach to the radio so you want to disconnect that first. The antenna on this car is a little weak but um, it doesn't seem like it wants to come out so I'm going to leave it alone for now. The interesting thing about these antennas is the base which is a cast piece and you'll see the Ford logo on there. Um, it's on an angle because the fender isn't flat. I think it slopes this way. And if you look at this base, it's actually got a kind of a pointed thing here that you think would maybe go towards the front to, to cut into the wind, but it actually does the opposite. I don't know if that's to keep it from, from vibrating or what. But anyway, there's only one way it goes on is what, the, what I'm getting at. And um, they do make reproductions of these if you get a non-Ford antenna, you might find that it doesn't sit straight on the fender. So I'm going to keep this one on here for now because they're actually not even going to use this antenna. So it's just on here to fill that hole. Um, some cars have blanking plates uh, that'll cover up this hole, but uh, they're pretty rare. So you might want to look for those if you're not going to run an antenna. It beats, uh, beats trying to fill the hole anyway. So here's a handy tip. Uh, I got the new door springs and wanted to paint those so that they didn't stand out. This is just a screwdriver masked off. Slide the springs down over and then you can paint 360 degrees very easily. Here's another little project we accomplished today. This is the door hinge detent spring. You can see it's still in there with the zip ties on it. I'm going to cut those off here shortly, but I wanted you to see how I did that. I put these in a vise and then uh, ran the nylon strips through. You don't want to run through the complete ends because then you won't be able to get them out. So you got to go back one loop and then uh, run those in there. And I used three. Uh, it's probably going to be the minimum amount you can use. What you're going to find is that these things want to slide on the spring and get beside each other and then the springs bowed. So it's a, it's a fiddly process to do it. And then when you bring it over to the car, you still don't have them compressed enough, so you gotta use a pry bar or something to kind of work them down in. Um, I put them on the, the detent part first and then got it over that bowl or whatever it is the other side goes on. Now, some people will tell you that you can use one of these um, which I bought off of Amazon. Uh, this did not work at all. 
Uh, it might work on GM springs, but it does not work on these Ford springs. Uh, I couldn't get it to work. I'm sure some people will uh, write in the comments that, oh, I used one of those and it worked fine. But this one, the springs did not want to stay in place. It wanted to pop out. I tried using a nylon uh, zip tie to keep it from popping out of the end. That didn't work. And even if I did get it compressed, which I, I eventually did, and kept it in, when I got it in here, I couldn't get the spring in and with the tool. It was the tool was in the way, so that doesn't work. So I'm going to tell you to use the a bench vise and some zip ties and do it this way. And it's not fun. I mean, it's not fun at all. But uh, that's how I accomplished it. Uh, now I understand why a lot of people will buy these hinges already put together. But since my hinges didn't really have any problems, at least this one didn't. Um, I didn't see the sense of doing that because then you got to align the door and that's a whole other escapade. So that's how I accomplished that. And uh, one down, one to go. Well, we'll end this week on a high note again. And here is the finished redone dash plates. I had to uh, do the glove box when I had to spray that black again because it had pulled off the, the black off the chrome that's underneath. And when I did that, uh, I found that my Krylon didn't want to stick to the uh, exposed chrome at all, so I had to hit it with primer first and then put the black over top of it. But um, that said, it uh, actually came out looking pretty nice. There's the radio bezel. So that's... Uh, chrome spray paint and just regular flat black Krylon. The lettering I picked out with white uh, artist paint and a small brush. And I did the same thing with uh, the Ford there on the radio plate. And so finally something going in that's <laughs> finished. So I still have to put the instrument cluster in. I've been holding off on doing that until I put the radio and the speaker back in. And then I'll put that in. Uh, I have to order the speaker yet. Uh, radio part is coming to see if we can make that work uh, in a way. And then I'll report that on the, uh, the next installment. So thanks for watching as always. And we'll see you next time.